So I'm back, back again, it's me. Um, this topic came to me this week and I thought it would be a good live stream or just a good thing to discuss as a phenomena, a concept, and really to talk about the meaning of this because in all the stories that we read in the Bible, they're meant to be interpreted in our own lives in many ways. And in reality, these stories are playing out constantly. It's just a story unfolding before us. And you need to have eyes that can see and ears that can hear. And, you know, this week I was listening to a interview with Roseanne. Now, if you don't know who she is, I, I am surprised. She's um, obviously a very incredibly talented and interesting individual who has had a very incredible career. And she's very opinionated and very principled. And she's also been very open about her own struggles as well. And she had went through some very dark times. And these are very public, you know, because she is a public figure. So listening to her interview, she had stated this phrase about how she felt that God was leading her out of Egypt. And that resonated for me because I could correlate it to my own personal experience of being taken out of somewhere you don't belong. And the kind of feeling of being in the desert for a very long time. This is something that a lot of people go through. And when we find that we don't belong somewhere and that we can no longer be there, it is very comforting to know that as we wander in the wilderness and we're not sure about where we are going or where we truly belong, that there is a deeper purpose to it and that we are being led somewhere better. I mean, in her case, obviously, she had went through a very public experience with cancel culture and having the people that she had built up, you know, turn against her and, you know, spread lies about her and um, kill off her character from the show she created. And, you know, it's it was wicked what happened to her, honestly. It was. It was wicked. I think about it and I still am shocked how these people who relied on her, you know, and who she built up later, you know, so easily turned against her and did not defend her. I mean, she even spoke of John Goodman, you know, months later speaking, you know, in her favor, basically saying that he knew that she wasn't a racist, um, which, you know, is not helpful months down the line. Where was he, you know, when she needed him? And of course, we know about, um, oh, what's her name? Sarah something. She played Darlene, that actress. Why can't I think of her name right now? Somebody knows in the chat. Can you post, post a name? I'm, I can't remember everything in detail, but she very viciously attacked Roseanne even though this woman had like been there for her, her entire career since she was a child. <sighs> Gilbert, thank you. Yes, Sarah Gilbert. 
Thank you, Keith. Hi, Adam. Hi, Keith. Thank you for being here. It's just an unfortunate event, you know, but she talked about it in such positive ways and how it really wasn't the place for her to be. It was not the place for her to be. She did not belong there. She should not have been doing that. And, you know, honestly, I had a premonition that something would happen once I heard that show would be, you know, on air. Um, I had a really bad feeling about it. I was like, this is going to suck. You know, this is, I just had this, this notion, you know, when they announced they were going to be doing a reboot of Roseanne, I was like, nah, nah, it's not going to work nowadays. It really isn't. And I especially, you know, I'd been following her closely on Twitter for years and following her career and how controversial she was and the fact that she was, you know, a Trump supporter, that kind of thing. I was like, they're not, she's not, they're gonna, they're gonna come for her. You know, they're just, who she is, is not friendly to the machine, essentially. Um, and she was really in a space that did not have her best interests. Like people wanted to make money off of her. People wanted to use her creativity, her, her star power, whatever, to build themselves, to build a show. But any sort of regard for her as a person didn't exist. And I think that's the feeling of being in Egypt in a lot of ways, you know, when we are in these places, when we are doing these things, when we're caught up, when we get lost, I would say is what it is too. Because for me, it felt like in my own experience, my own personal story of being in Egypt and coming out of it, being lost there, you know, I had forgotten so much about who I was, where I came from, and what really mattered. And being in that world, being in that life, you know, you work yourself to death trying to belong, trying to make room for yourself, trying to make a name for yourself, trying to make a space for yourself that's comfortable, that feels right. But in, at the end of the day, you are a stranger in a strange land. You are a slave. You are not free if that is the case because this land was never meant for you. This isn't where you belong. And to be taken out of it, you know, a, it's not a pretty picture. If you think of the story in the Bible of how the Israelites um, were, you know, taken out of Egypt, it was a very difficult process. There was a lot of embattlement and God sent all kinds of plagues and just stress that everyone had to suffer through. You know, it was not a, a good time, but we were led, you know, God's chosen people were led from that land where they did not belong, where they were slaves and they were taken through the wilderness. You know, they were taken through so much and the whole time they were provided for and new ways were made for them. And I think of that in my own life, you know, the times when I felt, you know, at the time I didn't see it, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. I didn't see that I was where I don't belong, that I was in a, in a land that was not made for me, you know, that I was trying to make a life somewhere that I didn't belong and that wasn't for me. And I felt so, at the time, so dejected. I felt rejection. Obviously, that was a big struggle. And I felt so embattled, I would say. Um, and then the experience of being taken out of it, once I kind of like was removed from it, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, there was nothing to be done, I would say. There was nothing that I could do to go back 
you know, because what had happened was so out of this world almost. It was almost out of this world. I don't know how to describe it, but it, it seemed so beyond anything that I had the power to affect. And I knew at that time that where I had been was not where I belonged. But where I belonged, I didn't know. And I'm not saying this because I think I've found where I belong. I still feel like sometimes I'm wandering in the desert, but I do feel comforted and strengthened to know that I am not someplace that was not ever meant for me. And I had a conversation with a friend about how she felt kind of unhappy or dissatisfied with the fact that like her works had not like manifested what she had hoped, you know, um, that she had not gained what she had hoped from it. And, you know, as we had that conversation, I, I did say to her, this was a couple of years back, I was like, one thing I've learned in life is that sometimes rejection is God's protection. Sometimes it's the best thing for us that things do not work out the way we want them to, or that we think we want them to. Sometimes if things had worked out in our quote unquote favor, it would have been so disastrous for us. It would have been so terrible beyond words what we would have encountered had we stayed somewhere that really wasn't for us. And I think, you know, in my own case, even though I've been through like some notoriety or my, you know, controversial opinions, I am so grateful that it never got to a point where I would be like a spokesperson or some kind of leader in some sense because can you imagine the utter stress that would be and the responsibility it would be? And really, was this what I was even made for? I think about that too. You know, I said it in a recent live stream. I don't know which one. And I have to say, I'm pretty amazed at the response to the live streams I did about feminism specifically. They, I mean, they were looking just at it analytically. You know, in my YouTube analytics, I was kind of stunned, like, hmm, okay. This video got this many views. This one got this many views. Oh, a thousand, over a thousand for both of these. Interesting, interesting that that is the case. And obviously this platform was built somewhat around that. So there is no getting around it. I mean, that's the kind of content people want or expect from me. But is that what I was made to be doing? You know, was I this, this person, this creature, was I created for that? Is that the manifestation of my you know, is this the highest manifestation of who I am? And I don't feel it is. I mean, I don't, shouldn't say feel. I know it isn't. I know it isn't. Um, <clears throat> but there you have it. It's it's very it's very interesting, and it's it's something that you know hurt me as well. I would say that. I kept going back, even though I like felt so often like I was hitting my head against the wall or like that I just, you know, was so frustrated, so confused, so un unsure of why things weren't working out the way I wanted them to, the way I saw them working out for others, the way I felt they should. I was so confused about that, but like... God, imagine if they had, how terrible that would have been. 
imagine it would have been horrible. And what I was given from the works of my hands and my, my heart and my voice, like the true treasures I took away from Egypt, like there were moments of beauty in that storm, but like at the same time, like I can't even imagine how it would be if like in my life now that was still what I was trying to do. You know, that was still tr what I was trying to be or speak about or um, affect. You know, there's so many people out there that are probably much better equipped for it than me. That's the reality. So... Hmm. Keith says a prophet is not recognized in their hometown, in their own hometown. Hmm. I suppose that's the case, but I mean, you also have to understand like that, you know, where you find yourself sometimes isn't where you are from or where you belong. You know, where we where we come from isn't necessarily who we are, or where we belong. It's maybe part of the story, but I mean, think of the Hebrews, they were they were all like born into Egypt. You know, this these people who were slaves, like they were born there. That was all they knew. And yet they were taken out somewhere else where the promise that there would be a new land delivered unto them. I think that too, the, the hometown thing is always an interesting and interesting phenomena. Like, You'll always just, in many people's eyes, you'll always just be who you were. You'll never, you know, no matter how you evolve, the things you accomplish, um, the things you overcome in your life or what you acquire, in some people's eyes, you'll always just be that person that they knew back then. You know, you think about like your family, how many like people in your family see you as the same person you were when you were a kid and you'll never get out of that because they're, they're not capable of recognizing that you aren't what you were. Rejection is God's protection. It is. I mean, you think about it like, Imagine, imagine, like, <clears throat> imagine if, like, you had your, like, wishes granted at your most prideful, at your most delusional, like, at your most, like, just imagine how horrible that would be. Let's see, hi, big bad mama. No matter where you go, there you are. <clears throat> I mean, that's true to an extent, isn't it? But like, like I said, you know, people's lives do change and who people are does change. So like you go home, you go to your hometown, you go, to the people you came from and they're not gonna recognize you. They're not capable. Uh, US says so true. I mean, I hope that everything I'm saying is true, but I don't know which part you're responding to, but thank you. It is difficult to feel rejected. It is difficult to go through the emotions of feeling like one doesn't belong. It's very harrowing and uncomfortable, but 
there is a greater purpose in mind and there is there are things unfolding that we don't always understand, but I just believe that it's things unfold the way they, they're meant to because things are working out in our favor. If I think like back five years ago, that was, let's see, 2018, what was I doing then? If I had somehow achieved all of my dreams and desires at that time, how miserable I would be, how unhappy it would make me, how depleted I would have been. I mean, I think about that, you know, just five years ago. If I am like so different from that, you know, person today, and in some ways I'm not, but like I am. Like if my dreams had come true at that time, how miserable would they have made me? Do you ever look back at your life and think about what you dreamed of? and just see that things not working out for you is the best thing that ever happened. You know, think about what would have happened if you, you know, everybody has the, like, um, someone that got away from them, right? The one that got away, someone they were in love with that it never worked out with. Can you honestly search inside yourself and recognize that it didn't work out for a reason? And that reason was that it would have not made you, it wouldn't have been good for you. you know, sometimes we can want things so badly that we are blinded to the fact that they are not fulfilling to us. They are not good for us. Oh, Keith is saying goodbye. Well, have a good day, Keith. Good luck with your um, duties and responsibilities. Is it, I'm being called Audrey Plaza. Is that her name or is it Aubrey Plaza? Aubrey or Audrey? I know we talked about this on the stream before, how people have compared me to her, but again, I, I get it in some ways, but I don't get it in others. And obviously, you know, I'm not her, I'm me. And, you know, there's room for, <laughs> there is room for, no, I'm talking about her first name, honey. Aubrey, isn't it Aubrey? I don't know. I don't know, though. I'm Like I said, I haven't really seen anything she's been in. Polar Knight says, it depends on what your desires are. That's true. But if you are lost in Egypt, your desires are all false anyway, because they are things that were never meant for you to begin with, because you are a stranger in a strange land. I mean, I'm trying to, that's kind of what I'm touching on here, like recognizing that when you are lost, what you dream of is not <clears throat> going to, you know, lead you home. If you're not capable of even recognizing your lostness, it's, it's difficult to navigate, you know, what is going to, you know, lead me to the ultimate fulfillment. But I think that's kind of a, you know, that, even that concept is seriously flawed as well, you know? 
I've been thinking about that a lot recently, how we're told to go after, you know, our happiness and follow our hearts and like just, you know, look for fulfillment. And the the reality is we're conditioned to, in those ways, be slaves to our emotions and our desires and to not be servants of higher principles. You know, if you're chasing after, you know, your quote unquote happiness. I mean, what is that even? I always think about too, like, you know, I just want you to be happy, you know, and that's a nice, that's a nice sentiment. It sounds nice, but happiness is, um, it's a temporary emotion, you know. If you want to talk about your life and like how you feel in the day to day, I think contentment is a nice thing to strive for, of course. Like, but happiness is something that will come and go. It's not the be all and end all of life, and it um just kind of focusing on the highs, I think is really damaging to us. If we're always striving after the next high, you know, the next good feeling, well, I mean, what is that conditioning us for? Again, it conditions us to be slaves to our emotions, to be slaves to our desires. And there's nothing in that that's going to set us free been thinking about this too with talking about the truth, thinking about the truth recently and what that means. Um, and I think after this, I'll probably head out, you know, this subject of truth. I did speak about it in another live stream and perhaps I wanted to condense it down a bit, but the truth is so important because what it gives us is clarity and what we are facing in this world is confusion left and right you know everywhere we look there's confusing messages you know and we're being in this particular realm and reality there is so much confusion everywhere. You know, basic, basic things, basic realities are being called into question and we are made, to, you know, to be, we are expected to go along with and participate in the telling of untruths, the telling of lies. Um, we are expected to engage in deceitful um, talk, to, to engage in deceitful language. That is, it's expected, it's, it's actually compulsory in some settings. And if you refuse to go along with it, you will be removed or you will be attacked or you will lose access. Um, it's rather frightening, to be honest. And, you know, for those people, though, that are, let's say, you know, losing because losing something very important like their income, you know, um, their social status because they are refusing to go along with an untruth. I mean, these people are being cast into the desert and they are being driven out of Egypt. And while it may be a harrowing experience to be in the desert, to wander, it is so good to be out of the land of confusion. It is so good to be out of the the, the land of lies. It is so good to be out of a place that compels you to say things that are not true. 
and that go against every instinct and every everything. Um, If you are taken out, of somewhere you never belonged. It is good to be grateful for that experience because you will be led eventually to the promised land. You will be led somewhere better. So while it is frightening, while it is harrowing, like know that there is a promised land at the end of the wandering at the end of the searching and what you will find is something that was made in particular mind for you let's see what's going on in the chat i see some people have commented This is referring back to the conversation we were having about being realistic about whatever dreams we have. I suppose I don't feel that any of my like former dreams were unrealistic, but they definitely were not for me, you know, not for me. There were better things for me. Hello, Olpheus Megalator. Welcome to the chat. Um, you've asked this twice. Yes, I am Terry. You see my name, it is there. It is also on my channel where this is being broadcast. I am Terry. But that's just part of, you know, who I am. Why did this live stream look interesting to you? Do you have an experience of being led out of Egypt? Well, I mean, you have to understand, I mean, when God led people to the promised land, you know, they did not believe that they could have it. You know, they did not believe. They, they saw that it was full of, I think, what, Nephilim and, you know, monsters. They didn't, they were frightened of it. They didn't trust the Lord. And then thus they were cast out again you know, made to wander more until the next generation could be brought up, you know, and they could be led into the land that God had made and intended for them. You know, we have to have faith. Faith is so important, you know, no matter what you're going through. Is this a religious live stream? Um... Yes, I mean, you could say that. I am using some language from the Bible and talking about that and, you know, putting it in context. It doesn't have to just remain there. I mean, we know and we talk about, like, um, how I see it and the stories in the Bible. And when you're reading these stories, they're meant to, they are unfolding in our lives today. They unfold in the world today. It is not something that happened thousands of years ago. It is what is always happening. You know, it is a standard of truth that exists through the ages that applies to every age, you know. So I think um, in that sense, I'm trying to like use that. I was I was inspired though, of course, by listening to a um 
listening to an interview with Roseanne. So I don't know how you feel about her, but I was very touched when she said that she had felt that she had, God was leading her out of Egypt when she was, you know, canceled back in 2016 and all the harrowing experiences she went through. So Alpheus does have an experience of being let out of Egypt. I would love to hear more. I would love to hear more. I mean, you know, don't have to get personal. And I haven't really touched on anything too personal for me, but people who have been watching me for years will know kind of like my story and, you know, for where I've been and what I've done. And, you know, sometimes too, I think like I was meant to see the things I was meant to see so that I could know things, you know, sometimes we're let wander we're let we're allowed to get lost because you know it's the only way we can really be found getting totally lost sometimes is the only way that like we can really be saved that we can understand what that means you know to be delivered to be saved to be yeah, taken out being led I didn't see it at the time though. Like at the time I was just like, what the hell is happening? You know, like what have I done in my life? Like what? I just like, you know, I, I destroyed my life. I thought, you know, I thought like, oh my God, I've just like totally threw a bomb in my life, you know? So, but what it did was it enabled me to escape from this land I'd been a slave in. Hey, welcome to the chat, Amy. Thank you for being here. <sighs> Polar Nights is not religious, but I do see the overall message you're trying to say. I wonder about that sometimes because um, I used to be like, you know, not religious and spiritual, but like, am I, am, now I've come to see like, I don't know, like, what do you mean? <laughs> They're the same thing. <laughs> it's the same thing. Like, I suppose I was, I, I was spiritual, but like, I was lacking in the, what I really needed to know or hear, what I really need to be focused on. Um, I've been watching you for a very long time. Ooh, ominous. <laughs> I have respect for you and your journey. Yeah, I was catching up with a friend yesterday who's, you know, known me for a long time um, and kind of seen all of my iterations unfold. And she's like, and you're not even in your final form. <laughs> I thought it was it was quite something that she said that I was like, you know, it's true. I, and I am a Phoenix a bit of that, you know, that, um, rebirth definitely is something that I've been through many times, you know, and I think it's, we have to die to ourselves to be reborn. Sometimes we have to like, die to shed the skin we have to let those things go and then we'll be transformed and we find that like with every new iteration with every new you know form we become even more ourselves more of a who we actually are like real rawness is revealed it's kind of the incredibleness of the story of the phoenix and it's but it's also a violent process you know death and rebirth is a very violent process and thank you you do not respect everyone's journey no i sure don't either sure don't either <laughs> nope <laughs> some people's some people are not on a journey you know what i'm saying
Indeed. You know, imagine that's the thing I, I feel about this kind of this topic or concept of being led out of Egypt. It's like, imagine what would happen if you had stayed like you would be dead almost. That's how I feel it. Like, you know, I don't know if that's spiritually dead. You know, I felt myself spiritually dying in some ways, you know, at that time I was spiritual, you know, I was so spiritual. I was doing all my spiritual things, you know, I was doing all my rituals and, you know, doing my, my different things. And it was not doing it, you know, it was not giving me what my soul really needed. You know, I think about that sometimes too. We think we can like, with the like religious versus spiritual thing, like we feel sometimes we can pick and choose like what we're going to, what we're going to do, what we're going to be into, you know, there's no, there's a freedom to it, which is exciting, but then it becomes this kind of, because of that, I mean, it only goes so far. And like, don't get me wrong, I definitely learned a lot, again, being in Egypt, learning the, these strange customs, learning their ways, learning their language, learning their, their, um, their, their science and technology, you know, learning their understanding of the cosmos, their, their, their beliefs. I learned so much, definitely was, you know, illuminating. But at the same time, like, what was I really craving? What did I really need? What did my soul really need? Because I don't think that was what was fed. Like, what I really needed was to understand my own nature and to understand that, you know, some things are very much beyond me and that I need to come into line and come into, like, submission to, to something greater and, and understand that, like, I mean, I saw myself as a God, you know, I really did at times, like, you know, I had that mentality that so many, like, people that get caught up in that stuff do, like, you know, I am the God creating my reality, like, and then looking around, I'm like, wow, this is the reality I can create. <laughs> I can only do so much. And you know what? I shed a lot. You know, I think about that too. And I'm not going to go from the Bible here, but I will talk again. I'll go from the Chronicles of Narnia. This is, um, I think, the Voyage of the Dawn Treader, where Eustace is transformed into a dragon, right? Eustace is this like little pudgy jerk kid, you know? who's nasty to everyone. He's a bit of a bully. You know, he's very self-serving. He, he is arrogant, you know, and he's greedy. And so he goes into this dragon's den and he sees this, or he, he meets this dragon that's dying. Right. And he, he takes, you know, this, I think he is something from the dragon. He, I think he took it's one of its, you know, prized jewels. And I'm sorry, I'll take that off. Um, he takes, you know, he goes and he thinks he's going to take this dragon's riches and then he's transformed. You know, he falls asleep there, he wakes up and he's a dragon. And he, in that state, you know, that state of being the drag, transformed into this dragon, he has this awakening about his real nature and like, he comes to see like how wretched he really was as a person, you know, all the faults he had, all the, you know, ways in which he just, you know, was horrible. Hor and he was, he was a horrible little boy until, you know, and, you know, in that process of like realization, you know, he starts 
working on it, you know, he does, he starts working on his soul, you know, he starts doing things to try to better himself. He's, he's, you know, trying so hard to be a better person through his actions, you know, and through his deeds. And he, you know, he goes and he tries to help, you know, the people that he came with and he, but he can only shed so much of his own skin. You know, he can only do so much on his own. He needs more. And that's when, like, finally, like, Aslan shows up and helps him to, like, actually come back to his human form, to, like, get out of this dragon skin. It's, a, you know, a beautiful allegory, you know, that exists in these these children's stories, the Chronicles of Narnia. And, like, God, I'm so grateful for them. And C.S. Lewis particularly, like, I don't know. <sighs> Obviously, he's very greatly venerated. But, I mean, I don't think it could ever be enough in terms of, like, the world he created and the way he really breaks down things and specifically like his understanding of the meaning of Christianity specifically, like, wow, no, no one comes close, <laughs> at least not in modern times, I should say, obviously others have come close, but he, um, the fact that he's so modern, you know, it, it's also helpful because we can relate to his words. But anyway, I, yeah, thinking about that, like that, that was me, you know, that was me. I was trying so hard to like purify my soul through my deeds and through like what I was doing and only, I could only take it so far, you know, I could only do so much on my own. I needed more. I needed like, you know, to, I needed help. We can only do so much on our own, you know, our natures are not always good. And I think there's, you know, I do have an optimistic view of humanity. I will say that, like, I do tend to think that people want to do good for others. I do tend to think that humanity is um, more egalitarian than we recognize. But at the same time, like, we all have self-serving natures. We all have things in us that, and ways of being that are, you know, they fall short. They fall short, just to say the least. You know, we all have those things that we can only do so much with. We all have those tendencies that come out and then we, you know, catch ourselves and it's like, why? Why am I doing this? Why am I behaving this way? Why am I committing this act? Like, why? And coming to recognize that and to see that this is like a real struggle of humanity and it's, you know, we have this nature that is not good entirely. It isn't, you know, some would call it sinful, right? That we are in some ways just inclined to to do these things that we know like are not good for us and not good for society generally but it takes that is you know it takes humbling it really does take humbling to come to that place where we can recognize that in ourselves because we don't get that message in this culture not really not really. I mean, and also, I mean, this, this culture just also has the mentality that like, once you're, once you've committed whatever egregious sin against, you know, society, it, you know, or whatever that you, there's no redemption for you. And that, that's the problem with the kind of purity culture we exist in, you know, they call it cancel culture, but it is really about purity and nobody is pure it doesn't exist we are not pure humans are not pure humans do things that are self-serving you know no people do things that hurt others <sighs> although i mean i will say that a lot of <laughs> A lot of what is described as, you know, hurt 
in this culture is not. It is simply truth telling. Um, that's that's a big problem too. I mean, we have to recognize the way that we are manipulated at this time in this culture to go along with, you know, if you don't believe the way that we believe, then you're wrong and you need to be basically annihilated, silenced, stopped. I mean, that's... Ooh. It's rough. It's rough out here. We are dealing, like I said in a previous live stream, we are dealing with a spiritual war. It is. I mean, that's what it is. It's a war for your soul out here. And you have to decide, like, am I going to be of the world or not? You know, am I going to be caught up and blowing every which way? Or am I going to be mindful about what I am serving. We are to be in the world, not of the world. We are here to affect reality, not be affected by it. But man, this reality does want to affect you. It does want to change you. It does make you, it does want to compel you to t say untruths. I mean, that is the most wicked thing at this time. It makes you want to glorify and and revel in, you know, selfishness. That is an untruth. It wants you to believe that, like, serving yourself is the ultimate. And it isn't. Amy says, steel is forged in fire. That is why birth is so painful. Indeed. I mean, it's also our makeup, you know, the way we are created <laughs> as women, you know, the way our bodies are. I mean, there's no, no bringing new life into this world without pain even if it's our own. Polar Knight say, says people are multidimensional. We are not just one way or the other. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. True. I mean, yeah, there is a tendency to see people as all good or bad. You know, are you good or are you bad? Oh my goodness. You know what, y'all? I had an experience this week. <laughs> it was very mild, but... Um, <laughs> If anyone here watching follows me on Instagram, I, I post things in dur during the day on my stories sometimes, you know, little snippets, little things. And last week, I, I know I said something that probably was offensive to some people. Um, but this week, somebody um, messaged me out of nowhere and said, hey, what is she, she said? Or she said, may I ask? She said, may I ask? And she said, thoughts on TERFs. That was it. Thoughts on TERFs. I'm putting that in quotations. She didn't put that in quotations. Um, and so that was like, interesting. Um, so I responded, nope. I, and I did a little like salute emoji, it was like meaning, no, you may not ask me my thoughts on turps, <laughs> which she read as me um, just saying no nope, wholesale to turps. I was just, <laughs> which was funny, and she's like. Oh, thank goodness. I've been thinking for over a week that you were a turf. And I was like, I just responded with a shocked emoji, you know, like one of those open mouth emojis, like, because honestly, like, 
I mean, I already said, no, I don't want to ha share my opinions about this subject. I mean, that's what I was saying. So I'm still going to remain there, like, regardless of how she responds to that. Like, if she thinks I'm saying one thing or the other, it doesn't matter because I am not available for that conversation. That's basically what I was saying. And I, I hold to that. That is not a conversation I'm going to have with you. <laughs> regardless. So... You know, I was like, whatever. And this person can think what they like, you know, because honestly, like, I'm just going to be me. I'm just going to do me. And if I say something that you don't understand, you know, or that you think is problematic, like, whatever, like you can, you know, respond to it or not. But um, that was a funny interaction. <laughs> How do people like not know? <laughs> like, I mean, how do people not like, I, I don't know. People don't know, I guess. I, it, but I, I, I wonder with that. I'm just, again, that's another, like, just, I, I like, we all know here, I don't like that term. I don't like that people get called that term. I don't think it's even accurate to call a lot of people that term. Um, and I, I don't like when people get called names either. I don't like that. Stop calling people names because you don't like what they think. What grade are we in here? Like, because, you know... I'm a bit too old for that. I'm a bit too old to be engaging in that. Like, Polar Knight says, no one likes it when you actually think for yourself. Hmm. Well, I like it when people think for themselves because it means I don't have to think for them. <laughs> Because, I mean, there, that's the flip side of it. If, if people aren't thinking for themselves, someone else has to do their thinking for them. And that's a lot to put on someone else. You know? I've found that in my life, too. Like, because I can think that it becomes a burden that others expect you to think things out for them. And I'm like, I can't do that work for you. you you got to... You got to you got to sit there with that and like work it out in your mind. Amy says, I feel like the turf concept is none of my business. Hmm. Yeah, that's probably a good response. Like <laughs> I mean, I felt like my response was good. <laughs> But it was it was misinterpreted, and that's. But you know what? That, regardless of what I said, it was going to be misinterpreted because there's no way to, to to discuss these issues without being misinterpreted. Because again, this is a, we talk about this. This is a matter of like lies versus truth, and those who decide to live and believe lies are always going to be in a state of confusion. So like there's no way when you speak to somebody who is in a state of confusion that they're not going to misunderstand what you're saying. And that's just, that's just basically it, you know? And I, I mean, I feel like you want to call people names instead of dealing with the fact that you are, um, believing in and propagating lies. So, you know, instead of like, again, people don't, don't but people don't want to look inward about it because, you know, that's, I mean, that's it. They, they, they're propagating lies. 
and in order to be and feel safe in that, which is a very dangerous place to be. It is, you know, when you spread untruths and bring confusion into the world, you are building your house on sand. If there is no foundation in truth, then eventually your stuff is going to crumble. And I'm just stepping back here and I'm just stating like, you know, when people approach me that way, it's just like, I'm not here for that conversation with you. Like, and I already know when the language is that, like when the language is that already, when it starts with that language, I already know what I'm dealing with. Because again, like who identifies that way? What group of people identify that way? I mean, I do hear women call themselves that. I've had women like jokingly call me that, but it, to me, it's like reclaiming any other slur, you know? And, and that, I don't want to be on here like, that's a slur because it's like whatever. But I mean, it can be, it, it can be, you know, it really can. It really can be because like, if you're just saying it to deride someone because they don't propagate or believe lies, then What am I to do? You know, what am I, again, there is no, there's no, there's no moving forward. There's no moving, moving forward with that. So anyway, we're kind of, yeah, I don't want to get stuck on this topic for too long, but I mean, I felt very strongly in myself, like that was a very funny moment. Um, I don't remember why I brought it up though. There was a reason I brought it up, but I can't remember just thinking back to the conversation we've been having where we were at at the time I brought it up. So, um, it, pardon me. Polar Knight says that the misinterpretation is usually intentional. See, I used to think that too, but... Um, you know, I'm really not so sure because again, like you have to understand that like people are confused. They really are in a state of confusion because they have believed lies. And when you believe lies, you are led into dangerous places. Okay. Like what happened? Okay. So like, let's, let's talk about like the fall of humanity, right? In the Bible. Getting back to the Bible again. What happened when Eve believed that there would not be any, like, so God said that they would die, right? If you eat from this tree of knowledge. Now, what did the serpent say to her? Like, question that. Like, do you, like, is that really going to happen? Planting seeds of doubt about the truth. All right. So we know what the truth is. Um, but when people start to believe things that are not true, like really they, they believe lies. This is why telling lies is bad, okay? This is why it's, it's destructive, okay? When people believe something that isn't true, right? When they believe something that isn't true, it leads to all kinds of chaos. All right? This is why we're not to do that. So in this circumstance, people are oftentimes believing an untruth. They truly believe this untruth, and they are therefore confused and being led astray into chaos, all right? And so when they are confronted with what is true, I don't think that they can, in their confused state, necessarily interpret what you're saying in the proper context, you know? And so they'll latch on on this thing or they'll go on, they'll try to chip away at something, you know, or get caught up on it. 
this here or like, well, what about this? You know, instead of like going back to the fact that they are the ones that believe the lie. Thank you, Amy. You're with me. That's true. That's true. That is really true. Because I think too, like with this particular, like with this particular matter, all right, like this particular circumstance where this person approached me. <clears throat> How would it have gone if I had like in my, you know, and I think about that too, like I was protecting my energy as well. Because when I was like, when she said, may I ask, may I ask, which is what I was responding to, right? I said, no. I said, nope, you know, no, you may not ask, basically. Because I was like, I'm not going to like have that conversation here and with you at this time. If I had though been like, well, actually, or like I was on my phone, so I'd be like, well, or I could talk into it like, well, here's what I believe. Like, where do you even go with that conversation? And then what would the response be like, oh my God, I didn't know that you were like this bad thing. Like where, or like, you know, what, want to get into a debate about it maybe. And I don't debate about that subject either. Like I'm not going to debate about that subject. You know, people have asked me to, I'm like, I'm going to have a conversation about this. It's ridiculous that we're not going to have a debate about this. It's ridiculous. There is no debate. There is truth and there are untruths. And the untruths that people are choosing to believe are leading people down very dark paths. And I'm sad to see it. I am sad to see it. And that's all. That's all I have to say. So, you know. Oh, this is a nice comment. Thank you. I am nice and intelligent and witty. <laughs> but don't get it twisted. I have a dark side too, but I, you know. I'm glad that that comes across watching me. It's nice when people see those nice things. Yep. Yes, Stevie Wonder. When you believe in things you don't understand, you suffer. You know, that's the thing too. I just, just touched on this subject. I was watching... Um, Actually, I've seen it happen multiple times with this particular subject where people will be describing like the difference, they'll, they'll be describing what a gender is, a gender identity is, right? And they'll be like, I've heard it so many times when they're talking and they say, it's a little confusing at first. Red flag. Why is it confusing? Why is this confusing? Why? So it's confusing. You know, I don't get confused by things that are I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to think of an example of a time when I was confused. And it, it let me, you know, I was, it was something good. Cause usually when I'm, I'm confused by things people are saying, it's because like, it's not making sense and it's not making sense because um, it's dealing in something that either I have no experience with, which in this circumstance, that isn't really true. 
I do have experience with, you know, some this stuff definitely, but like at this, at the second, same time, like I'm confused because what's being said doesn't make sense because what's being said is that reality is not real. Our reality is like somehow different than what it is. People fall along with lies because they're going to be told they're bad people otherwise. But I've talked to so many people hell bent on putting words in my mouth. Yeah, that does happen a lot too. Like you d disagree and then it's like, and then at the same time, it's always like the conversations always go the same way too with, with this matter, particularly they always go the same way. And then they'll start bringing up like examples of like women not being able to get pregnant or who've had hysterectomies or something as if that's not totally dehumanizing and like missing like it's it still don't like it still doesn't change a damn thing, you know. <laughs> what the hell? Like again, like you know, going to the word. What does it say there? <laughs> what does it say? <laughs> there are two made in a specific way for a specific purpose with specific tendencies. And obviously, not every creation is going to be perfect. It's not all going, they're not all going to operate the same way. And then some may not be able to fulfill the creation mandate, but you know, like at the same time, they're still what they are. I mean, indeed, a lot of it is just social contagion and like group think. <clears throat> I was talking about that too in this culture, like a lot of people um, because of the veracity and actually like this gets into a whole host of other topics and issues that cannot be discussed rationally without name calling. Um, there's so many things like this is just one example, but like the, you know, the way in which people are programmed, you can almost say to respond or react before they think like they have a reaction rather than a response. So there's no active listening taking place for one. And then there's also like, um, just the same talking points over and over again, over and over again, same, same damn talking points, same, just it's, it's the same thing over and over again, like this, 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 and this. And it's, they're confused because they didn't think these thoughts to begin with and they haven't even thought through what they're saying. And like the moment you do start to think it through, you're like, well, this doesn't make sense. It's confusing. But like, if I don't go along with it, then I'm out of the club or, and then if I do go along with it, then I'm able to like feel good because people are validating my goodness and my goodness comes from other people's validation, not from like something higher as if other people could validate anyone else's goodness when we all know what people are like, you know, I mean, again, getting back to that in this, this t discussion, like people are fallen. People have sinful natures. People do wicked things. And I don't trust any damn person who sits there and acts like they're good. Cause that, that is a red flag to me. 
And this happened during like COVID. I had this experience of during the pandemic working with this woman. She was probably like 10 years younger than me. And she had some good character points. Of course she did. Of course she did. She really did. There were many traits in this girl. And let me, okay, this girl doesn't identify as a girl. She identifies as a they. So we'll, we'll say that. Like, you know, this girl though, like young woman was, had many good character traits. However, she also was of the belief system that she was good. And because of that, she scared the hell out of me. Okay. <laughs> scared the hell out of me. I remember, um, you know, everyone at that time was just so nasty, like, and living in a liberal city, like I live in, you know, people were very extreme about the COVID regulations, like don't meet up with anyone. Don't, don't attend parties. Like around Thanksgiving, it was like, don't go have Thanksgiving dinner. Like, you know, like around the holidays, it was like all of that, all of that, like don't live life message. And um, this was a woman, she lived in a collective queer household, of course. And like, you know, they, they were all, they were like all interacting with each other and going out and like, you know, whatever. I don't care. Cause honestly, I didn't agree with the regulations as it stood, but you know, that's a topic for another day. Um, but yeah, she was always the most militant. Anytime anyone would walk into our business, she would be the one like screaming, like, you need to have your mask on like right away, like just very like in their face, like, and yes, they did need to have their mask on, like, whatever. I mean, did they, though? Did they? God, that shit was evil, what we went through. It was so evil. It was so hard working with the public at that time. I'm so glad I got out of it. Oh, my God. Like, I'm so glad I got out of it. <sighs> but, yes. So, she um, was talking about like how she and all of her roommates follow all of these regulations because we're good people. That's what she said. she was like, yeah. And we follow all these regulations because we're good people. I heard that. I was like chills down my spine. I was like, do you honestly believe that that makes you a good person? You honestly believe that you're a good person? And, you know, this is again like <clears throat> radical, queer, like fuck authority. Oh, well, I don't know, fuck authority kind of people. But like all of the, all of those people were very much on like let's just do what the authorities say because they know best, right? I'm like, well, what authority? Like. <laughs> I mean, I've, I'm old enough to remember when like anarchists and like ra political radicals questioned authority. They didn't believe that just because an authority told you something that that made it true. Like they understood that authorities were fallible and that there's no greater authority than this, you know, like your own sovereign self. <clears throat> I mean, I believe there's a greater authority than the sovereign self, but you know, like I, I like I understood that that was like the belief system. So I mean that scared me. Um, so you know, with this, like people, and let me take this down, but people get caught up in believing that they need to just go along with what everyone else is doing and saying so that they will have their goodness validated. And it's all about validation, you know. And let me tell you, if you want your goodness validated, other people are not going to be able to do that for you. They just cannot. They are not good themselves. They have natures which have traits that are not good. But anyway, hello, Agruda. Welcome to the chat. I'm glad you caught me too. Hmm. That is true, man. That is so true. 
But it doesn't take time. I mean, well, I mean, I guess it does take time, but like what time does it really take? Really? I mean, belief, what you believe in, these things matter. You know, they matter very fundamentally. This is who people are. And, you know, if they don't have time to actually sit and think through what they actually think or sit and think about what they really believe and like reason it within themselves and their soul, like that's a big problem. Yeah, but it's true. I mean, I, I have no doubt that that's a lot of the times what's going on too. And especially when it's like, you're in a community and there's a certain expectations that you will conform to certain beliefs. And if you don't believe the way we believe you are bad and you will be ousted and nobody will want to be friends with you or work with you, you know, and people will come for you and harass you and abuse you because you dare to think differently. So I think a lot of it is fear as well. Like it's scary to think about it. It's scary to really think these things through. Hi, Izzy. That's true. That's, that's a good point. You cannot reason someone out of something he or she was not reasoned into. Yeah, I mean, I think that's too, a lot of the times like people try to approach this with logic and most people are not logical. Human beings are mo mostly emotional creatures. So, I mean, they, they, they go with appeals to emotion and that's going to sway them more than anything. And like, if you are not that way, if you do not like <laughs> this is the thing with me like obviously i have emotions obviously i'm an emotional person sometimes they get the better of me but most of the time i prefer to be logical about things i prefer to think things through i prefer to like not let my emotions get the better of me because i know they are fallible and they are not true you know just because something you know feels a certain way i know that it doesn't necessarily make it a certain way you know <laughs> greenwich village lucky you <laughs> <clears throat> yes Yes, their eyes are stuck in the eye roll position. I do feel for people. I mean, I do feel for people. Like this is affecting people on all over the, you know, like it just affects people. It's bad. Right. I mean, I think the, that, that the fact that it was like a way to polarize the population, you know, because a lot of people are like, well, is this going to even work? And a lot of the data was showing, you know, it doesn't really work. Like wearing the masks, I'm not convinced it worked. I mean, if you're sick or something, you know, I get wearing a mask and gloves and like, you know, if you have to go out in public, but like the fact that we all were compelled to wear masks and then being gaslit about like, you know, how, oh, you can breathe just fine. I'm like, I don't breathe as well with a mask on. I actually don't. Okay. I know what I breathe like. I know. And I couldn't hear people as well. Like it was terrible. Okay. So like imagine working in a like customer service position, which I was doing like at the start of the pandemic. This is what they did. People had to come in wearing masks. I had to wear a mask. And then they put these goddamn barriers between me and the public. So we had these like plexiglass things. So awful, so awful. It was so awful. Um, and so like trying to hear people, it was, it, it made everything so much more difficult. Like everything was made 
you know, an already difficult job was made so much more difficult, <clears throat> so much more difficult. So, I mean, just thinking about that and it, anyway, I, I don't want to get on that topic as much, but I really just felt like a lot of it was, I didn't feel any safer. Okay. I knew intellectually that none of this stuff made me safer. You know, if I was going to get it, I was going to get it. And if I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, I knew that didn't help one way or the other to like have all this horrible extra BS I had to deal with. <clears throat> Oh man, the ultimate circular question that can never be answered. What is a woman? <laughs> I've thought about doing a, um, I haven't seen it, but there was that Matt Walsh documentary called What is a Woman? Do you all think it would be fun if we did like a private viewing of that sometime? Um, and... Um, like, I don't know, like, I mean, I wouldn't broadcast it, but we would, we could come here privately and do it and we could like plan for it and just watch it together. Cause I, I'm kind of curious about that because <clears throat> I've seen some clips of it and it's funny. It's funny. Just like <clears throat> watching this like normie looking dude, just kind of like straight face be like, <clears throat> asking that question. I don't know. It's just, it's kind of interesting to see how this matter though, too, like that, you know, we all, a lot of us in this chat have been dealing with for at least a decade, you know, this scene where this was going and then to see like the normies, um, kind of getting on it. It's like even more funny now to me, it's kind of so, okay. Well, maybe I'll plan for that. We'll do something kind of privately and, you know, we can try to watch. I don't know if I can actually, I wouldn't be able to stream it. They may not allow something like that, but if anybody else could watch it at the same time, we could all watch it together and just kind of respond in the chat. And, you know, with this StreamYard technology, other people can come on. So while I'm streaming, I can have other people streaming so we can kind of like have a group chat about it. So, um, yeah, let's see. El, is it El Mikai or Mickey? El Michi? I don't know. The modern authorities have co opted the anti authority culture, and now that is the culture that follows the party line. Political radicals, quote unquote, towing the party line. I mean, indeed, indeed, it has all been co opted. And it's all very co-opted. It's all very like, <sighs> well, I mean, we know how I feel. We know how I feel. It is just, it's sad. It's sad that that has been able to be co-opted, but I mean, why wouldn't it be, you know? Why wouldn't it be? I mean, Leah is here. She says, heart, 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 heart. Thank you. Um, I'm saying hi. Oh, man, I'm going to stay out of this little beef. All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you. 
But yeah, I'm staying out of your beef though. <laughs> so, you know, like, I don't know what the hell, like what's going on. All right. <clears throat> A Gruta says, I watched the doc and it's amazing, sometimes even hilarious. Well, if you thought it was hilarious or amazing, I mean, the, the few clips I see, saw looked amazing. You know what? I missed Halcyon. I know he was in here. He said something. Hi, Galen. Welcome to the chat. Um, but yeah, the, so, okay, we'll plan something. We'll do something, or maybe I'll just watch it on my own and like <sighs> giggle responding. I don't know. It looked, it looked interesting. I know it came out like a year ago or something at this point. I, I only learned who this guy was like a couple months ago. Like I actually was in a chat like or I was in a live stream with on the Adam Lore channel and this atheist guy, I think atheist junior was his name. I'm not sure. Um, came into the chat and like mentioned him and like, I didn't know who he was, but he said that he was like doing videos against him and stated that he was, um, what did he say? He said that Matt Walsh was like, spreading misinformation about like this hospital stating that they were doing um, sex change surgeries on kids. And I was like, well, were they? <laughs> like, were they performing like surgeries on kids? Cause like if, if they were, then he's not like wrong for like saying that because like, yeah, I just it was annoyed. Like I hate when people just assume how dare you assume my beliefs? How dare you assume how I'm going to feel about this matter? Like, how dare you assume how I'm going to respond to that? Like, I'm just going to take you at face value. You know, I'm not. So, um, yeah, that conversation was interesting. He said, yeah, no, they weren't. But apparently, like, some of his... Matt Walsh's followers like issued a bomb threat against the school or the, not the school, the freaking hospital. And then it had to be evacuated. I was like, what? But I am not sure if any of this is true. Like I can't keep up with this stuff anyway. Like obviously there's a cultural war and at the, you know, behind it, there is a spiritual war going on, you know? And Quite frankly, I want this to be out of the hands of women. You know what I mean? Like at this point, I feel like not that I want, obviously there are women that are like publicly dealing with this issue. I've seen I, they're, they're out there, but I feel like <clears throat> for like the women I know, like the, the kind of, I, it's like, it's obviously this is our fight, but like so much energy gets expended into this. I'd rather people who have the resources and like the privilege are handling it. You know what I mean? Uh, Leah asks, what is the name of the, the doc? Um, it's the What is a Woman documentary by like uh, Matt Walsh. He's like a conservative pundit online. I think he's with the Daily Wire or something like that. They also have like Candace Owens. And is Ben Shapiro part of that too? I think he is. I'm not sure. But yeah, it's like, you know, he's he's part of that milieu anyway. Um but he just kind of approaches it from what I, I mean, from what I understand, he's a like conservative Catholic. So obviously he has religious qualms with the like kind of stuff going on, but like he doesn't approach it from that angle. He's just trying to get like definitions out there. And cause that's been the really irritating thing with um, this whole debacle and the kind of like debates that 
I've seen gone, gone on or like conversations I've had that went like sideways. Um, so many of them are, get kind of, we can't have a conversation because we can't agree on terms. Like there is no middle ground. And I mean, for me, like there is no middle ground. I know what a woman is like, and I'm not, we all know. I mean, we know, people know. Galen being sweet again. I'm looking classy. Thank you. Am I? I don't know. I feel a little bit like I could class it up a bit. I mean, just on the edge, right? <laughs> just right on the edge. Like <laughs> I try, I try to like walk that fine line between classy and trashy, you know? Damn. <laughs> the chat commentary is funny. I'm just like, y'all, like, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't know that there was, I mean, Leah is my friend. She sometimes speaks in ways that offend people. I'll say this, but, you know, like, be like, okay, I'll just say this. Like, she's also, you know, a person with feelings and, you know, I'll say that like she does say things that are shocking and offensive sometimes um but I also feel like you know how do I put this like um I think that that's very common on YouTube and, but it's not very common hearing it from women like Leah or like that are kind of in the category of YouTuber that she would be, you know, it's not okay for women to express themselves in this certain way. And if they're like of a certain persuasion, you know, I hear conservative female YouTubers, you know, who would be aligned with that or like who aren't, you know, expressing feminist politics in any way, like say way like offensive things, but they don't get the same reaction. But um, I don't know, like I also just, Leah is my friend. Please understand that if I see the good in her, like there is good and she deserves, you know, to be treated that way. Um. There are very tense moments in the documentary when he asks to people who work on these clinics that apply these procedures on kids like puberty blockers and they just didn't want to answer about it. Yeah, I've seen I've seen like little I saw one clip where someone like walked out because he had asked about Lupron which apparently has been prescribed for like chemical castration which I hadn't heard of, but I guess it is, it can be effective that way. I don't know. I have to do my own research about this stuff, but like, yeah. Um, and I also saw like a, a um, politician walked out, like wouldn't answer the questions. Uh, this interview is over. This interview is over. <clears throat> I'm in Ashland right now and it's really frightening and upsetting how many people here in their 20s are trans. It's actually become really conformist to be trans. Lol, it'd be more edgy <laughs> to just be cis. Oh my goodness. Um... It's, that's disturbing to me. Like, how can they just, you know, how do they get sucked into it? I mean, it's, again, it's a social contagion. It's like Ashland. It's like this little liberal bubble. And they get sucked into it. Like their peers are doing it. Everybody's like thinking about it, but not hard enough. You know, they hear this stuff about like, well, my gender. And then of course there's all the grooming online of like, 
well, my gender identity is this, that, that, and the other. And, you know, it's just, it, it becomes this kind of like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. There are two sexes. We were made for individual purposes. What is all this other stuff? What does it, it's also very boring as well. Like, it's all, you know, it, it is. It really is. I don't want to hear people like young people who have not even met themselves pontificate about who they are. You know what I mean? I'm still learning who I am. You know, <laughs> that is what life is. We're like uncovering who we are through life. And it's like, we have to listen to people who haven't even lived describe, you know, how they know this like very untrue stuff about themselves. It's just, ooh. That is so kind. Thank you. I always look like I go into a fine dining restaurant. In this this skirt and like my cardigan with my little camisole, no. If I went to a fine dining restaurant, believe me, I would look way better than this. But thank you. I do like to look nice though. Like, because if I ever go out, you know, I don't know if I want to go outside. You never know who you're going to run into, you know? And I want to look my best. What if I run into one of my haters? What if I run into, yeah, one of my haters out here? It's my dignity that matters. You know, I'm going to look good. I'm going to stun on them. That's how I see it. <clears throat> yes, Le Leah is very fiery. She's like, whoa. So, I mean, sometimes Leah shocks me. I'll be watching her video. I'll be like, I'll be like, damn, she didn't say that. <laughs> I'll be like, whoa, Leah. <laughs> but you know what? Oh, dear. I'm by far the most offensive person here. I'm the only one who competes with Terry for being most hated in YouTube circles over the past 15 years. Well, Galen, we'll need to catch up. I don't know that you've been like, I didn't know you were continuing to have people hate you. <laughs> I respect Leah's ability to not mince words. Indeed, yeah, Leah's very good at saying certain things. I really know what I really liked a recent video that Leah did responding to this like mother who had like again person of hair color. Ding ding ding. She had little pink streaks in her hair, and she was talking about her non-binary identity and like basically her kid came out as non-binary and then. The mom is now non-binary. I'm like, it was just this ridiculous video of this woman in a total state of arrested development. And don't get me wrong. I'm girly at times. I definitely get into that. I definitely have a childish streak to myself. But I was just so like stunned, like watching that video. And then Leah's commentary, though, was like really good in that video because, you know, really tore up like so much of the nonsense this woman was saying. And it's also like, how do you even have the time? Like, I just can't imagine like being that old, still having this, I'm not like other girls mentality, you know, and thinking that like, I'm somehow like, she was no different in anything she described about herself or her appearance than any other middle-aged mom. Like nothing. Maybe it was that she was so boring that she needed to contrive this, you know, personality, you know, but it really, it, it made her even more. It made her even more dull. But I, I appreciated that. Leah says, if people are hating you, then you're doing multiple things right. I mean, sometimes. <laughs> I definitely have been hated for doing things that I probably shouldn't have done. <laughs> I've definitely like gone too far, said the wrong thing and had people hating me. And then I was like, F word, you know. Oh, wow. Now you're lumping our critics together. Yeah, I mean, I have found that like a lot of my detractors are dumb. 
or like just nowhere near at my level. I came across a video someone did about me like five or six years ago. And this guy was like ripping into my appearance. And I'm going to be honest, five or six years ago, I was not looking my best. Okay. I did put on a lot of weight after breaking my arm. So I was, I was fat. I don't, I was not looking my best. Okay. And yeah, but he like was, this guy wasn't even on camera. This guy had like to represent himself like a little cartoon image. And yet he was ripping apart. And the cartoon image showed him looking like he wasn't, you know, very attractive either. But he was like ripping apart my appearance, like just digging into me for like this, that, or the other, like, and just insult being insulting about that. And I'm like, okay. Like, I didn't continue watching it. Like, I only watched the first bit. And I was like, why am I even, like, I'm not interested in this. Like, again, but like, again, it's like that, you know. In no way does this person have the ability to meet me. If we were to have, like, an actual, there would be no actual conversation. It would be, like, in one of those bullying circumstances where they need to, like, bring in their lackeys to like insult me so that I feel bad, you know, and that I feel like they're right. And, you know, I'm wrong because, you know, they're saying mean things about me. I mean, okay. Just to bring it back to the Bible, what does, what did Jesus say? Like if, if they hate you, it is because they hated me first. You know, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. All right. Like people are going to hate. If you are standing for truth, if you are standing for reality, if you are, you know, going after the falsehoods in this culture, people will hate you. If you are saying that there's something more, there's something deeper people hate you. And so it's not always like you can't win everyone over to your side. You know, if you are standing in truth, if you are rooted in that, then people will hate you. If you are not of the world, people will hate you. There's not anything to be done of it. You know, and I think about that too, like through my career as a YouTuber and like the detractors I have had, so much of it has been envy. Okay. And maybe I didn't always recognize it because, you know, I'm not an envious person because I don't need to be, <laughs> you know, what do I have to envy? I mean, I could envy things. I suppose I could, if I really was miserable, I could sit and envy, but like, you know, generally, no, that has not been something that I am prone to. Right. But when I think about like the kind of derision and like hatred I have attracted, a lot of it has been down to that. And even like when I was taken out of Egypt, as I, I talked about in this video, like at the beginning, when I was taken from the land I did not belong in, you know, a lot of hate was thrown at me at that time. Okay. And a lot of it I saw at that point, that's when I began to recognize I'm like, these people hate me because they envy me. And it's not that they envy, you know, my life or what I'm go what I have or what I'm going through. Like, no, they envy who I am. And that was like a really amazing awakening for me when I was like, because I had some, let me tell you, I had people writing me very vicious things and to like actually come and read it and be like, this person envies me. This person envies what I do. And I don't see, cause you know, or they, not envy is what I do. They envy what I am. They envy what I am. They envy how I look. They envy how I talk. They envy how I carry myself. They envy the fact that I have done this, that, or the other, and that, that they can't do, that I can do and be things that they can't. People are envious out here in this world. And that's another thing. If they envy you, they will hate you. And they will not want you to have what you have. And if you have the light in you, if you are not of this world, the worldly people will hate you because you have something that they don't. 
You know, they, they search all their lives through the world. They sift through these things. They think they're going to find it. And it makes them, they, when, they do, when they are exposed to it, if they're not willing to admit what it is, they will hate you. It is what it is. Anyway, I'm sorry I went off. Sorry I went off there, but I'm just saying. Mm hmm. So Galen says. Indeed, I think that is true. Like, but it's not always true because some people are of this imperative that they cannot associate with anyone who is unclean. You know, and I think that comes up a lot at times. Like I said, there is a purity culture going on where like there is no redemption. And if you believe something different, you're unclean. And you know what? There are people who hold beliefs that I don't want to associate with either. You know, there's some beliefs people have that I'm just like, nope, I'm not. Mm -mm. I don't want to be associated with because, again, like who you associate with does reflect on you, you know? The fact that Leah is so outspoken, do you know like the number of nasty people who have come to me and been like, why do you associate with her? You know, she doesn't express herself in the ways that I like. You know, I have people actually coming to me, trying to separate me from somebody who has been a genuine friend to me. You know, and these people don't do a damn thing for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and I'm like, excuse me? Excuse me, but it's true. You are who you associate with does reflect on you. It does. People will see you as that. Mm-hmm. No, people don't like that either. Right? Yeah, that woman. Okay, yeah, okay. I'm I, I'm behind in the damn chat, but yeah, that woman. I'm not like other moms. I'm not a mom. Like, what are you? You I don't even get that woman. Like, you have a husband and a child that you carried in your body and either pushed out of your body or had cut out of your body. Either way, whoa, but you're not a woman. Okay, okay, okay then, Miss Pink Hair, okay. Miss Not Even Pink Hair, because she just had little streaks. I'm not impressed with that. Mm. Um, I suppose like criticism isn't a bad thing necessarily, but I think a lot of people don't know. It's hard to take criticism seriously when someone is not your friend. You know, how can I take a criticism from if, if your friend criticizes you, right? It is because they care for you. If your enemy criticizes for you, criticizes you, it is because they do not care for you. A lot of people, I mean, I think in like we pretend that there's like a, you know, this is a real community and we're all friends and we're all buddies, you know, <clears throat> in terms of like YouTube and stuff, you know, the people making content, but you know, it's not always the case. It's really, it's rare. You know, the people I've made that are like friends that I could actually accept criticism from are rare on this site. So, but yeah, ad hominem, trash talking, you know, calling names. It's so immature. Like, what is that? 
I need to update my avatar too, y'all. Always be a light unto oneself. <laughs> oh yeah, Leah. I've I've had little bitches come to me. But oh, pardon my language, everyone. I don't like to swear on my live. Excuse me, but we are almost two hours in. It should be fine. But yeah, I've had I've had people yeah be like, and I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Can't believe y'all are still beefing in the chat. Are y'all watching me or are y'all watching the beef in the chat? Be honest. <laughs> if you're still watching me, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Drink my little Soleil. Okay, so yeah, they came out at um, Safeway, probably Albertsons for many of you. I don't know what other companies they run, but uh, yeah. This Soleil Yuzu Citrus is awesome, awesome. Right, exactly. I mean, again, if your friend offers you criticism, you listen, right? <laughs> If someone offers you criticism in a way that is like constructive, that is helpful, that recognizes you, who you really are, you know, that's the other thing. A lot of times, like, I find with this like stuff, people just don't, they're not, a lot of people are not capable of seeing who you really are. And that's what it is. Um, and people are only capable of meeting you as far as they've met themselves. So that means that, you know, they're only going to see so much of you. They're only going to understand so much of you. Um, and there's not enough introspection. You know, that's the other thing I think that is lacking introspection you know i think if people take the time to like introspect about themselves the things they do the things they say the way that you know maybe they're behaving it just um it helps you understand others more and there's just a lot, a lack of understanding, I think, how to reach people because people really haven't, you know, done the same thing in, the, in themselves. Um, so let's see. Chat moved on. Hold up. All right, got some thumbs up here. Thank you. Polar Nights is trying to tune into both. My brain is not good at multitasking, though. I like your comments, Polar. I don't, I mean, I'll have to say, I don't like when people leave me condescending comments. It's like, I usually just, but I usually just like, you know, try to deflate the situation. I mean, I have people leave me some, you know, it's part of being on YouTube though. You're going to get comments. People aren't going to like you. 
it is what it is. I try to understand, but I also understand my views won't always align with people I like to watch. I mean, that's fair. You know, we're all different people. We are all different people. So for those not in the know, um, Amy and Leah have been going at it in the chat. It's been exciting to um, witness. So they're, they're, uh, they're coming for each other. It's going to be pretty exciting. Can't wait. Can't wait to see what, what unfolds. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess Amy has offended Leah with some comments in the past and yeah, they're, but you know what? I think I had a similar circumstance on Leah's channel once. Like I remember commenting on one of your videos. Yeah. Okay. This is what happened. I commented on one of your videos and this woman responded to me and I had like read this woman, like talking like mad smack about me in some I, like other forum. I think it was like mom's net or something like, Uh, the maintenance people are vacuuming in the hallway outside just right now. And it's, they always spend extra time vacuuming outside my apartment because I, you know, since I'm in the scooter, I leave extra dust on the carpet there. So they got to do extra work outside my apartment. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I was like, how do is this woman was like, oh yeah, like, da -da -da, Terry, I agree with you, you know, like, girl power kind of BS. I was like, excuse me? I read what you said about me. I read what you think about me. How dare you try to be all cozy with me now? What happened with woman from Mom's Night? I mean, she never responded, which is good. She shouldn't have responded. She shouldn't have commented. Like, this B, this B I T C. H, okay. <laughs> Had the audacity to talk to me. Like, don't pretend to be my friend. Don't pretend that we're in something together. Don't pretend anything. If you're sitting around in other forums, you know, with my name in your mouth and you're talking bad on me or you're like, you know, don't do that. Like, like, don't do that. You know, if you don't like me, you don't like, and the thing is though, again, with the hate and the envy and the viciousness, the thing that you recognize though, is that they do like you. They want you. They want to be you. They are jealous of you. You know what I mean? In some regard, in some regard, they have some sort of envy towards you, at least in this, in the, like what I understand, like there's some level of that going on. And so once you recognize that, you know, it's, it's a lot easier to just let it go, to just let it be. Because in that circumstance, like, you know, she does want to, there's a part of her that loves me and wants to be in my energy and wants to be pals with me because she, she knows that I'm cool. She knows that I got it going on. She knows that my play, that being with me is the place to be. Being in with me is good. She knew that. She knew that. But that does not mean, that does not mean, however, that, you know, she, um, you know, is, is like not envious. And that's the thing about like envious people. I mean, they all, they don't want you they're not, they want what you have. They want to be with what they want your energy. You know, they want to, and obviously like envious people will like oftentimes befriend people that they're envious of. This has been a thing, you know, that I've had to deal with, like where they'll be like, 
let's be friends, let's be close. Let me gather all you, this information about you while I'm pretending to be your friend and somebody that supports you so that I can use that against you. Like it's a real phenomenon. It's, you gotta protect yourself out here. And like, again, it's like the criticism that was being, you know, written about me, written about me, could have been brought to me. And it probably would have been dismissed outright. Because again, oh, yeah, this woman was saying it wasn't just that she was talking about me, she was talking about my family. That's what it was. See, that made me disgusted. Like, because my family does not deserve that. My family members do not deserve that. You know, my family, in many ways, is obviously it wasn't like my upbringing, you know, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't idyllic. Whose is for one, but you know what? Both of my parents love me. Okay. One of them has passed on, loved me and did the best they could for me, you know, and however wrong you think I am, or however misguided you think I am, or crazy you think I am, like, don't blame my family for the way I am, okay? Like, that's so rude. It's so rude. I, I felt so offended, like, just because it's like, you find me so objectionable, and now you're going to bring, like, the people I love into this? You're going to bring my kin into this? Because clearly, like, if you think I'm objectionable, like, you think I'm objectionable, and you're just, like, going to say that it's the fault of like my kin, my family, my blood, which is even more rude. It's even more rude. Yeah. They, yeah. Just remembering that. I mean, that was years ago though. Like, but I just remember like commenting on one of Leah's posts and then the, this woman whose like name I had read saying those things like, you know, <laughs> coming at me like, oh, yeah, Terry, da, 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 like, excuse me, excuse me, are we friends? Or did you say some nasty things about my family, like my family who are not on YouTube, who are not making YouTube videos, you know, who are not out here in public, like saying things this way, you know, who are not doing what I'm doing, who don't deserve that. <sighs> anyway, I'm going on about that topic. I don't want to with that. And the chat has been going. Mm. Galen said, I always thought you'd be cool to hang out with all the way back in stick them days. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I am. I was, I've always been fun. Hey, you know what? Like, I'm so happy with like, I got to meet so many cool people from YouTube. You know, obviously we haven't met in person, but like I've met other like people from YouTube and it's been awesome. You know, I'm trying to, I mean, okay, there's been people though that weren't so awesome, but you know what I mean? Like, I think that's the other thing too, like, especially like back in the day, like the stick em days right? We had such a community, you know, we had such a interesting community at that time. And again, there was like, there were all these people like, who wanted to be my friend, like could tell I was cool. And then they like turned on me once it wasn't like, it was clear that I wasn't, you know, I was a persona non grata, like, you know, bad, do not associate with, but I know, I know they wanted to be my friend. I know they were upset. They were like, oh man, I can't be Terry's friend. She was cool. Like, <laughs> oh well. Leah, don't be offended by it. <laughs> Just be like, <laughs> somebody calls me baby girl. I'm like, yeah, that's right. My fine ass. That's right. Just keep it going. Call me honey next, honey. <laughs> Call me sweetie next. 
I'd be like, yep, you want me. I know it. <laughs> hmm. Reverend Edward Claiborne. Did he do that Hell to the Nah song? Was that him? That's pretty wild. I'm sorry. That okay. That's all right. God damn. <laughs> They're crazy people out here. Crazy people. Oh, that's so nice. I try to be. Well, okay, I've been going two hours and I've kind of said my piece about being let out of Egypt. Does anyone want a link to come into the chat? I was going to open it up if anybody else wants to chat because I kind of want to just have a hangout now and draw. So I'm going to post a link.